The story begins over a hundred years ago, in a monastery in a corner of the old Austrian Empire. There lived a monk named Gregor Mendel, a teacher, a man of many talents, driven by scientific curiosity. He spent long, busy hours working over a patch of peas in the monastery garden. He noted that some of the traits of the pea plants were clear and distinct. Some of the strains were always tall. Some were always short. Some had wrinkled peas. Some smooth peas. Some purple flowers. Some white. And he set out to determine how these traits were passed on from one generation to the next. He cross-pollinated large numbers of the plants, and he kept careful records. After eight years of painstaking work, he reported his findings to the scientific society in the town of Brunn. And so, gentlemen, I crossed a pure strain of tall plants with pure short plants by putting some pollen from one strain onto the flower of the other. You might suppose that their offspring would be medium-sized plants, but not so. The next generation were all tall plants. And now when I crossed these plants among themselves, three-fourths of the grandchildren came out tall and one-fourth came out short. On an average, tall plants outnumber the short by just about three to one. How does this happen? From tall and short parents, all tall children. And from tall children, a mixture of grandchildren that are both short and tall. This is my theory. Our original parents were pure strains. So each child inherited a unit for tallness and a unit for shortness, but they all grew tall. That's because tallness is a strong or dominating trait. I call it dominant. While shortness is weaker, or as I call it, recessive. Now these child plants are not pure strains, even though they are tall because each contains a unit for shortness which is hidden or blocked by the dominant unit for tallness. But it is still there, waiting. So when these child plants are crossed with each other, a grandchild plant has four equal chances. It may get a tall unit from each parent and be a pure tall plant like the tall grandparent. A short unit from each parent becoming a short plant like the short grandparent. Or a tall and a short and become tall, or a short and a tall, and become tall. And thus, an average of three plants will be tall for each one that is short. Tallness and shortness are due to hereditary units. Using thousands of plants, I have studied six other traits for color of blossoms, shape of pods, color and texture of peas, and so on. And these traits, too, are inherited as units. Units that are passed on from generation to generation. And in every generation, they are shuffled and reshuffled according to the laws of chance. That, I believe, is what causes the puzzling mixture of traits in nature. Gregor Mendel died January 6, 1884. His work was unnoticed by the world, but his careful study of nature had begun to explain one of her great mysteries. He proved the existence of something that could not be seen, the invisible units of heredity. The same units that govern your hair color or the shape of your face or make your eyes blue. But what were these units? How did they work? These were problems other scientists had to work out. 